Joining us now is Ojini Oji Ope with stories trending around the world. Did you have a happy weekend? Yes. yes. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I was all over the place. I saw you. You know, this time around, I was once talking you. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Do you want to say happy weekend? I was like, well, we're about to check. It's today Friday. No, it's so always get Friday. Excited. It's always Friday well, yeah. for me. My best day of the week. Good morning. How are you? Bless you. Ojiwa. Perfect. Bless you. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, Bilunia Elon Musk announced on Sunday that he plans to change the logo of Twitter to an X from the famous blue bird, marking what will be the latest big change since he bought the social media platform for $44 billion last year. In a series of posts, the Twitter owner said that he is looking to make the change worldwide as soon as today, Monday, July 24. In China, at least 11 people were killed on Sunday after the roof of a school gymnasium collapsed under heavy rain in the northeast city of Kikiha. 19 people were reportedly trapped inside the gymnasium when it collapsed. Eyewitnesses say many of the victims are children. Police have arrested the person in charge of the building. In Nigeria, the chief of army staff Major General Torid Lagbaja over the weekend inaugurated a special operation, Hakorin Damisa, meaning Tiger's Teeth, to tackle insecurity in Plato State following the spate of attacks by terrorists in recent months in many communities, particularly in the Mangu local government area of the state. At the launch of the operation, the army chief charged the troops to wipe out the activities of the terrorists, stating that the violence must not resurge. Under sports, Formula One champion Max Verstappen won the Hungarian Grand Prix by an impressive margin on Sunday as Red Bull made history with a record 12th victory in a row. It was the 44th career win for the 25-year-old driver and a ninth in 11 races so far this season. Under entertainment, Barbie, the recently released comedy fantasy movie, topped the U.S. box office over the weekend, raking in over $155 million. The movie set the record for the biggest domestic debut of 2023. Barbie stars Margot Robbie in a brightly colored comedy about the iconic doll. The movie had cinemas across America buzzing with Barbie fans all dressed in pink. Get that for me! Ideas live forever. Now let's begin what's trending. Social media was agog on Sunday after reports emerged that the Lagos state government had allegedly approved an estimated 61 million naira for a mass burial of 103 NSAS victims. In a quick rebuttal, the Lagos state government debunked the claims, stating that peddlers of the news are deliberately misinterpreting and sensationalizing the report, a letter which went viral on social media from the Lagos state government public procurement agency titled Letter of No Objection, Mass Burial for the 103, the year 2020 NSAS victim, claimed that the state government engaged the services of TOS Funeral Limited, a private firm at the cost of 61,285,000 naira to bury 103 bodies which were identified to be victims of the killings. The Lagos state government, however, said the 103 casualties mentioned in the letter were victims of the NSAS violence in community clashes prior to the incident at the Lekki toll gate on October 20, 2020, insisting that the casualties are not from the Lekki toll gate, as being alleged, and that nobody was retrieved from the Lekki toll gate incident. Now, the Lagos state 
government has maintained their claim. They claim that nobody was retrieved from the incident. I mean, over the weekend, uh, our videos were trending from, you know, 2020, where the Lagos State Governor gave the interview saying that, you know, nobody died, also from CNN. But let me take more re uh, reactions. This is from Big Mo. Well, he wrote, first things first, the letter is true. So that's out of the way. Secondly, let's even assume the deaths didn't happen at the toll gate for a second, but 103 human beings, not cattle though, killed across the state while protesting for police brutality was not enough concern for the state or federal government for almost three years. Why did the state keep mute about the number of deaths? What exactly did the state federal government do to prevent this massive death happening again? Life in Nigeria is truly worthless. I don't see how this much number of people will die during a protest and not even a memorial was done on their behalf. Since the government knew about this number of deaths over the years and kept mute about it, it's clear there has been a massive cover-up by the state of what truly happened during the NSAS protest. Now I truly understand why the last state governorship election was a do or die affair for them. Well, Rini Oduola wrote, families of NSAS victims killed by the police forces showed up, by the way, looking for the bodies of their loved ones, including Belumi Onifade's mother. They were asked to drop DNA samples. They dropped. Lagos State Government never did any DNA test for the samples collected. I can go on and on with the tweets, but Dr. Abate, I want to start with you. Um, I mean, I spoke with um, the former spokesperson for the Lagos State Government, Benga Omotosha, and you know, he, you know, he gave me some insight, and he did share with me a couple of articles and reports where they had announced or made some announcements, if you can pull up those uh, articles, about these bodies that were in the morgue. And he also said that it is a common thing that happens in Lagos, that there is, you know, Lagos State always conducts uh, mass burials. I mean, this is one of the reports, the public announcement that came out. But can you really, really blame Nigerians for feeling the way that they are feeling at this point? Dr. Abati. Okay, a number of issues here. Incidentally, we just had a conversation with uh, Dile Farotimi, who was one of the uh, lawyers, lawyers yeah. involved in making representations before the Justice Tori Sukuobi, mm -hmm. uh, you know, panel that was set up to address the mass shootings in uh, Lekki. And he too made a number of, uh, you know, observations. Mm -hmm. But first, let's deal with the statement he put out by the uh, Lagos State Government yes. and signed by the PAMSEC of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Ubuye. Uh, he says, one, that this letter that is up there, mm. that is causing all of this, is a letter from the Public Procurement Agency in Lagos mm. State, you know, uh, giving, a, which is a letter of no objection, which is what you, want, you do in government when there is a contractual thing involved. So they've engaged the services of the funeral home. Mm. This is the amount involved. Then, of course, you have to approach uh, the uh, procurement agency at the federal level, they also have their own procurement agency. And then you get a letter of no objection, mm. which means you can go ahead. This is a five-paragraph letter. Yes. And it talks about payment of taxes and all of that. Now, people took this letter and said, well, this is clear evidence mm. that people were killed right. at the Lekki Toge. But the explanation of government is that, look, those persons, these uh, victims that they want to do mass burial for, they did not all die at the Lekki Toge. And that, in fact... Nobody died yes. at Lekki Tollgate, quoting in this regard what, what the white said. paper, right. you know, said. And they're saying people died in Ogba, people died in uh, uh, Ikeja, people died in Ikorodu, people were also killed yes, during the Koyi jailbreak. Yes. So they have that long list. Yes. And that it is uh, malicious, an attempt at sensationalism to say that, oh, this is evidence that people died at the uh, Lekki Toolgate. So, and they tried to debunk all of that. However, when we had a conversation with Dele Farutimi, Dele Farutimi said, it is not correct to say that the report of the Okuobi panel did not say that some people were killed at the Lekki Toolgate. That it was in the white paper that there was that discrepancy. That was a point that he pointed out, that, that he indicated. And I've tried to check. Indeed, in the report of the panel, there were, you know, indications that there were casualties at the Lekki Toge. But 
you know, what the exact number is may be a matter of argument. But the state government is saying, why only three people did not die there? Number two, is he also expressed concern, which I think is also something that can be taken on board, that you are spending 61.2 million to do mass barrier for 103 persons. The people are dead already. So what, what is the cost? He calculated it. He said that's about 500,000 uh, per person. And he thinks that there is corruption involved. Yes. Now, if that can be established, that figure should be investigated. Okay? And then number three, in any environment at all, whether it is uh, even NSAS victims or they are victims of other killings in Okoba or Agege or in any part of Lagos, should 103 people just disappear within a space of uh, about one week? But the government says, well, the thing to consider is that while the panel was sitting, the chief pathologist was invited to give evidence and that the chief pathologist of the state could not link the bodies to Lekki Toolgate. And that too, the chief corona between also issued a statement and said anybody who had missing persons in their families between the 17th uh, to the 27th of uh, October 2020 should go to the state morgue, the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital morgue, to go and identify bodies there. Maybe they will be able to find their persons, you know, at the morgue. And that since then, up to now, nobody showed up. So more than two years after the fact, the state government is now making arrangements to do mass barrier, to decongest uh, the morgue. Yes. But on all sides, it is most unfortunate that anybody will just die like that. And that's where I'm going. 103 persons. Carry Only uh, how many more have died and who have been taken to the state morgue so that now they want to decongest the morgue. Mm -hmm. So people die every day needlessly, you know, uh, in this uh, country for the wrong reasons, for, you know, deaths that cannot yes. even be explained. Yes. The kind of death that will not happen in any decent society. Absolutely. So that is a, uh, you know, touching part yes. of it. Uh, I, a lot of people have said, I mean, 103 people. I mean, this story means a lot to me. I, I broke down when I saw this happen. I mean, in the lead up to the actual day of the Lekki Tollgate shooting, you know, there was all of this uh, mayhem going around Lagos, people, police um, stations being burned, people being killed. But 103 people, if people are saying they're, they're skeptical about yes. that number of people. And, and for good reason. In fact, OJ, what this report did was that it brought up more questions for yeah. me. And it's almost re, it's resurrecting the NSARS story. Mm. I don't believe that this, we have come to the end of this. I think this will just bring up even more um, questions. And I, I, I wish Nigeria were a country where journalists would be allowed to do their jobs in terms of investigations and allowed to have access to interviewing key personnel, um, access to documents so that we can truly verify what is the tr true um, state of what's happened. 103 people, human beings, and going back to that first tweet you read, we're not talking about animals here, we're talking about people who lived, people yes. who had family members, who had a livelihood. If these kind of numbers had died in that period that the government said, there should have been a national day of mourning called by the government. The fact that there was quiet or silent about these numbers all these years and three years is a cause for concern. Why? Why didn't any, anyone say anything? Yes, they put out, out adverts, they, comment, they did, but it didn't give the true picture of what had happened. Mm. Other questions, again, would be, or something else I wanted to identify is that in that letter that was written, where it answers victims, I think it's time that the state government, in being sensitive to the people, stop tagging what was, has been said by international and local community members as one of the most peaceful protests when it happened to be victims of people who died as a result of NSARS. People died as a result of violence that erupted following the agitations of people after the event of the 20th of October 2020. Because we have reports of how it was very organized, particularly at the epicenter, Ground Zero, in, in Adeleke Tollgate. Mm. Then moving forward in terms of that, is that um, the panel report versus the white paper. Yes. There have been inconsistencies, and that's why there are questions that still emerge. Right from the very first day when the um, military said they were not even there at all, then going on to saying that they did not fire live bullets. You know, so many inconsistencies. When would Nigerians get the truth about what happened on the 20th of October 2020? And I hope that the state government at least would honor the dead 
as was said, why hasn't an, an epitaph been built? Why hasn't that place been consecrated? Why hasn't nothing been done? 103 lives just like that. Big questions to be asked. Absolutely, Rafai. Hmm. Okay, so where do I start? I'm going to have three parts to yeah. my speech this morning. Number one, are we a society that wants the truth or we want lies? Do we even understand the truth or we've constantly fed on lies that have heralded our union as a country? I think it's a time for sober and deep reflection about the capacity of the truth and what it can do to our society. Or, if we don't want the truth, we continue to wallow in lies. But I'll tell you something. Goodman Danforgio said, conscience is an open wound and only the truth can heal it. For everybody out there, you've got your conscience open. It's a wound today. But it is the truth that can heal that wound you have. And I pray the souls of the departed will find healing. Yes. Secondly, we've become a state that does not care for lives. 103 people, that's the one we even saw. I would even say we even dignify them by putting their body in the mug for some time. Do you know that in Nigerian state, a lot of people die and their bodies are just left to waste like that and their carcasses. So we're not a country that appreciates lives. And that's why when a protest happens, all sorts of things happen and people are killed. It is a cultural problem we have with our psyche. And the state must learn to protect its people. I'll take you back to 1960s. A protest happened, famous protest in France called Soise and Wheat. When that protest happened, the protesters, they were going to storm on the French presidential palace. Charles de Gaulle was a war general, a brave man. He didn't run away from the Nazis. He stood and he fought them. But when his own people were about to storm, the Champ de Lisée. Charles de Gaulle ran away. He did not run away because he wasn't brave. He ran away because he knew if they had stormed the presidential palace and his guard had reacted, there would have been loss of lives. And Charles de Gaulle said, it is not on my watch. The French life will be lost. That is a leader that understands the importance of the life of his citizens. Absolutely. Do we have leaders like that? No. My third face, Audrey, is... The rigmarole we've done. I look at that video you play. You remember we fined over two million for that video. At first, the military denied that it was a lie. Mr. Lai Mohammed, we remember the word said. We remember when the MBC then, director Mr. Uh, Indacha, President Indachaba came here. And I asked him just one question. I'll never forget that day. That what were the methods of verifying that video that it was wrong, but there was no answer. We're finally proven true. At first, the governor said, oh, I didn't call the military. And the military said, oh, the governor called us in. And we had a lot of back and forth. Then the white paper, I mean, then the report was released. Then it became political. We can say all and all and talk about the facts and details. But I ask again, do we want a country that will stand on the pedestal of the truth? And please, can we stand the truth? Well said, Rafai. What is the truth? What is Pilate asked? Hmm. Well, all right. So it's relative. Mm. We'll take another story. In Edo State, a video showing a convoy of government-owned sports utility vehicles stuck in mud on the Benin Sapele Road went viral over the weekend. The convoy was said to belong to the governor of the state, Godwin Obaseki. Well, in the one-minute video, the videographer could be heard saying that even government officials Join the masses in driving through bad roads in Nigeria. Let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. Everybody they collect for Nigeria, both the poor and the rich. Everybody they collect. 
I mean, look at this. This is happening in Nigeria. I mean, I took a story on this road. I mean, it's dilapidated. It's horrible. I mean, I, I, this is Governor Obaseki. I mean, I don't know what else to say. This is what's happening in his state. But he did say, he came out to say that, you know, he tried to uh, uh, get money to fix the road. And the federal government said that they had awarded the contract to, you know, another you know, contractor okay. to fix that particular road. I mean, but he could have still fixed the road, but what, what do you make of that? Well, story time, but very, story like time. the person said, everybody will collect. Yes. We'll come to a point where both the rich and the poor is already happening now. The only thing I would say is that hopefully what would come out of this, aside from the fact that this is a huge security threat, this, the state governor of, yes. of, of Edo State stuck in traffic, anything could have happened to him. But moving away from that, what I'm hoping would come out of this is that perhaps our leaders would become more sensitive to the plight of the people. Absolutely. Maybe we need more governors um, convoys stuck in, in pits and I mean, look and, at the road. Like this, look so at this. That is that a road or a sanity. ditch? What is this? It's horrible. This man was, you know, cra going crazy online on social media, screaming Fix about this roads. absolute, absolute mess. Just look at the road. Come, 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 come. come. Just look at the road. Look at the road. Though. Just sit on the road. Just sit on the road. Not be road again. Though. Not be called gutter. <laughs> <laughs> see, friend, try to do. Video. Yeah. Come. See road. Yeah, now where they call this place? Where they call this place? Uja and Joshua. Go, go, go. Go, 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 not see, not see where. Not, not be wrong again, no. It's not be covered up. Please. Come, not, not be, not be wrong again, no. This fake land, no. It's not be covered up. Bad of it. This message here, yeah, Esa, Esa people, Esa, Esa people. Now you get this message, Esa people, Esa people. Oh, any person that can help us, where Esa people? Es, you see, I'm my road. Esa people, where they? Esa, we not get people for Esa again. Esa people, since Sabo Salim died, the road called the Baru. See for that road. Oh, somebody help me. Come on, they come help me. No, somebody come. Somebody help me. Oh, come, 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 come. Keep come, come help me. See for that road. We'll take our final story. Ex Niger Delta militant leader. Asari Dokubo over the weekend, in a brazen show of support, unveiled a group of militants. Working for President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, or Dokubo, while addressing the militants on parade in a video that has now gone viral. One that anybody that misbehaves or seeks Tinubu's downfall will be smashed. We work for President Ahmed Bola Kinibu and he will succeed. Yeah. Anybody who is planning for him to fail, the person had already. Yeah. If he do anyhow, yeah. if he do anyhow, yeah. if he do anyhow, he will call him Oto Oto. Call my turn. All right. What has Nigeria become? Turn by turn. <laughs> I beg you, wait for your turn. Wait for your turn, Dr. Bati, this is... You see how interesting Nigeria is? Mm. Institution whereby the president of Nigeria has the support of militants. Mm. Okay, and you ask yourself a question. How would one individual be able to put together a group of about 300? Yes. And I can mobilize. Well, I don't see them uh, doing anything violent, but they are expressing loyalty, solidarity uh, for uh, President Tinubu. One of those curious things about our society, about the role of non-state actors uh, within the uh, polity. 
Well, you may say maybe this is during the political season, and these are supporters of uh, President Tinubu. But you see, no, it wasn't during the political <laughs> season. This well, is a recent. Well, 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 we 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 I'm trying to, I'm to, have to give them the benefit of the doubt. No, this <laughs> so, was a video that was released after he came out no, of the, the president, ad. The president but came back from the ad. So it wasn't nah, political nah, season, nah, and these are non-state actors. actors. And, and I, I don't know how they this. They couldn't is, do anything uh, evil. <laughs> they could have done in this one's hand. What about the guns he was brandishing before? Let's call it speedy speed. If we want the truth in this country, no, the president of Nigeria being supported and defended by militants. It's curious. It's very <laughs> curious, Dr. Batsi. The optics is not very good. No. Because the president of Nigeria has the whole army. He's, after all, commander-in-chief yes. of the armed forces. So that's what makes it uh, curious. Yeah. And a lot of people will be worried that why would anybody have almost a personal army of over 300 militants? But those are the questions, Dr. Batsi. They are very valid I questions. Rufai, I wish I we mean, had time. I mean, what we work go. in what capacity? Let's yes. be very careful. Are we fast building another Haiti, other Papa Doc Duvalier with the Tonton Makut? Is that the question? You see, these Frankensteins we are building everywhere with non-state actors. Mm. I'll give you a little history lesson. Well, Audrey, unfortunately, because of time. We don't have time. America started with this, mm. with the Soviet Union. You know, Funding the Mujahideen through Charlie Wilson. Right. There's a movie out there for a called Charlie Wilson's War. Mm. You can see now how the same people America for the turn again. Let's well, be right. careful. All right. Well, we have to go. Well, thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.